Hey folks, uh, welcome back, and this is lab number 11. This week we are going to talk about file I.O., and this is the ability to read and write data from files. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick little example where I'm going to take some grades and I'm going to average them, but the grades are going to come in from a file. So over here in Replit, and as usual, um, I'm actually going to rename this, so file I.O. Uh, average grades. All right, so if you were to go to the URL that you now see on the screen, you'd be able to pull down this replit if you want to play with it yourself and test it. Um, inside a replit, you're, it's a, you're, uh, you're able to create a file that is a text file as well as creating Java files. So what I did was I went ahead and I created a grades.txt and I just put some grades in here. So we have quiz 1 colon 100, quiz 2 colon 90, and so on and so forth. And then down at the bottom, we have three test grades. So I'm not going to do all the fancy rules that we do. I'm just going to average the three and give you a test average and a grade, um, a test average and a quiz average. All right, so over in my Java uh, window here, what I'm going to do is we're going to start off and you have to create a file object. So I'm going to say file my file is equal to a new file and I'm going to pass it grades.txt. Um, if you're inside a replit, it's really nice because it automatically knows the working directory is here, so you don't have to worry about this. But if you're doing this in IntelliJ, you're sometimes going to run into problems where that file needs to be in the working directory in replit, or sorry, in IntelliJ, or it's not going to be able to find it. If you run into that problem and you know where the file is, you can just fully qualify the file name. And what that means is you would have something like, if you're on Windows, C colon users, easily 13 desktop, um, grades. And you have to put in two slashes if you're going to do that because slash has meaning inside of um, Replit. So it would end up looking something like that if you were trying to um, specify that you want to read it off of the desktop. If you're in a, a Mac, it would be something more like slash users slash um, easily or something along those lines. So you can fully qualify if you're having trouble finding the file, but that's not an issue because I'm here in Replit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scanner object. So I'm going to say scanner my scan equals new scanner, and I'm going to pass it my file, which is the file that I just created above. All right, in order for any of this to work, I'm going to need to import java.util.scanner, and I'm also going to want uh, java.io.star. Um, all right, so that's going to create for me a scanner object, which allows me to read in a file. Okay, so usually what you're going to do is you're going to have a while loop and you're going to say while my scan dot has next line, which tells you that there is more to read, then I'm going to store in a, I'm going to create a, a string called line, which is going to hold one line of the, of the file at a time. Um, actually, I'm going to call it lines and it's going to eventually hold the entire file in one, um, no, it's going to hold one line at a time. All right, so uh, we're going to read in one line, and so that's going to be line equals my scan dot next line. All right, and then just to test that this is working right now, I'm going to system dot out dot print line um, my uh, the line that I read in, and hopefully, if this is working, I should see on the screen all of the contents of the file uh, grades.txt. So they should appear over here if that's all working. Um, package Java IO does not exist. And that's because it should be Java. It's just Java IO. Um, it's not IO.star. It's Java IO lowercase dot star. That's what I'm doing wrong here, I think. All right, let's see if that works. And okay, all right. So anytime you're dealing with file I/O, um, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that you wrap all of this in a try block. Um, goodness, all right. What is happening here? So what we're going to do is try, and then we're going to grab. Suddenly, I don't have access to my shortcuts. That's a bug. All right. Um, so we're going to insert. Um, spaces here just to space this out. Uh, what is happening? There we go. All right. And okay, that should work. All right, so there's their try. And then anytime you have a try, you're going to need a catch. So we're going to catch exception. 
and I'm just going to print out the exception. So it's e.get message um, so that I can see if anything did go wrong, I will at least get some kind of an error message. All right, so anytime that you're dealing with file IO, you need to remember to make sure that you're including all of the try catches that you need. All right, so it looks like that's successfully read in the file. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna look at each of those lines. And um, if the line is um, got a quiz in it, I'm gonna add it to a quiz average. And if it has a test, I'm gonna add it to a test, a test average. So I'm gonna create an int quiz sum uh, which I'm going to set equal to zero, and I'm going to create an int quiz count, which I'm going to set equal to zero, and then an int test sum, which is zero, and int test count, which is equal to zero. And I'm doing this because I don't necessarily know how many quizzes and how many tests there are going to be in the file. So we're just going to count them as we go through it. So I'm going to say if line dot contains um, quiz, then we are going to quiz sum plus equals, and I need the number off the right-hand side of here. So I'm, I'm gonna need to pull that number off of the line because right now the, the variable line has the whole line in it, but I don't want the whole line. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna split the line. So I'm going to create an array of strings. Um, so I'm gonna say string array, um, I'll call it bits, is equal to line.split, and I'm going to split based on the colon. So what that's doing is it's taking this line and it's going to use that colon to split it up into two parts. And so the first cell of that array is going to contain the word quiz one, and the second cell is going to contain the 100, but it's as a string. So now I need to take that string and I need to parse it to an int. So int quiz grade is going to be equal to integer dot parse int, and I'm going to pass it bits at position one, which is the second cell of the array, and that should be that 100. All right, and so we're gonna add quiz grade. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to say quiz count plus plus. All right, so that's what was gonna happen if it was a quiz. If it's a test, then we're gonna deal pretty much the exact same thing for the test. So I'm just gonna highlight all of this, and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, and well, I'm going to copy this and paste it back in again because it's mostly the same code. All right, so in this case, we're dealing with a test. So we're still going to break up the line and we're going to parse out the, the grade, but this time I'm going to add it to test sum and test count. Um, it would be probably better if I renamed that variable. It would actually work either way, but I'll I'll go ahead and do it just so that it's nice and consistent. All right, so at the end of this line, um, after I have been through this loop, I should now be able to take all of those numbers and average them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say float quiz average is equal to quiz sum divided by quiz count, and float test average is equal to test sum divided by test count. All right, and then I'm just going to print those out. Um, so quiz average plus quiz avd, and then test average, and test average. All right, let's find all the missing semicolons. And with any bit of luck, what we're going to see is we're just going to get an average. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We got an average of 79 for the quizzes and an average of 85 for the tests. So let's do a quick smell check on that. If you average 80, 90, and 85, that should come out to about 85. So that sounds reasonable. And up here, it looks like we had 300s. We had a zero. We had a 75. Yeah, I could believe that comes out to 79. Uh, you're certainly welcome to check it after the fact, but that's probably right. Okay. So the important part of all of this was we started off and we created a file. The file object is how you specify the name of the file that you're wanting to take a look at. Then we use scanner to connect to that file and we're going to read in information out of that file. Um, we used while my scan dot has next line that tells you that there is another line in the file that needs to be read in. And then we used my scan dot next line, which actually reads one line at a time in from the file. As I was doing that, I then took the line and 
decided if it was a quiz grade or a test grade, and I pulled it out and broke it into its bits and added it to a sum and incremented a count, and then just did normal division down at the very end. All of that was wrapped in a try catch block, which you're going to always want to do anytime that you deal with file IO. And so there you have it. Um, so again, you can always grab this URL up at the top. If you want to play with this yourself, just go to that URL and you should be able to download it and fork it and play with it if you wanted to make changes to it or change the grades around or whatever else. So hopefully that gets you started on today's lab and you guys are going to have lots of fun with File.io and I'll see you next week.